Hi everyone, Nova here from Brighter Outlook Counselling Service with this week's live stream narcissistic abuse recovery question, answer and support session. Thank you for joining me. It's fantastic to have you back as always. Okay, uh, today or tonight, I should say, um, we're, we're very lucky to have David DeMars joining us again to co-host the show. So um, yeah, David will uh, be here very, very shortly as he always very kindly does. He tunes in um, at about two o'clock in the morning, uh, all the way from Las Vegas. Uh, so yeah, as soon as I see David um, pop up on my screen, I'll let him in and David will be helping me to host the show tonight. Okay, and already we've got Mark Silverwood there. Hey Mark, how you going? Thank you for joining us. It's great to have some guys here. Um, there just aren't enough of you. I know um, there's certainly uh, just as many male victims out there. I, 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 I firmly believe that when it comes to narcissistic abuse, there are just as many male victims as there are female um, victims. Uh, narcissistic abuse, there does, does, it's not gender specific. So uh, it's really nice to see that some guys are joining in. Uh, so I guess we can kind of get the message across that, um, guys, it's okay to talk up about uh, the psychological abuse that you've endured um, at the hands of a woman. Yeah, And I, I know a lot of men struggle with that because simply because of um, the way society views that. And okay, we've got David here, so I'm going to let David in. David add. Da -da -da. What's going on from your end, David? Let me try again. Hmm. I don't know what's happened, David, but you might want to um, maybe comment or something like that. The ad's gone, which is really, really strange. Um, anyway, wait, while we're waiting uh, just for, um, for David to, to join us, sometimes there's Facebook glitches, Facebook updates, and it's not as easy as it always is um, to, to enable guests to join. Um, so we'll just uh, wait a little bit for David. I'm just going to try once more doing this. Yeah, hold on. The ad is back. So let me try that again. Hey David, can Hello. you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're fine. It, it was really weird that I added you and then it, we, the guest isn't there and so I tried again and then there was no add button and then I tried again and it was kind of normal. So who knows? The main thing is you're here. <laughs> That's it. That's all That's that matters is we're doing this. Exactly, we're doing it. Okay, let's see who we've got here already. David, uh, I said hello to Mark Silverwood. Mark's here already, and I was saying how nice it is to have some um, some men joining us. Um, we've got uh, Carolyn Mobsby is there. Hey, Carolyn. Uh, we've got Jules Keeley there. Jules says, great dancing, very talented Nova. Oh, you're so sweet, Jules. You obviously saw my little clip I put up the other day. Thank you so much. Um, and we've got Gemma there. Hi, Gemma. Uh, whoops, the camera's moving. Um, that's all I can see at the moment. So, yeah, David, um, do you want me to introduce what we're going to talk about tonight or did you want to do it? Go ahead. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we've also, I've just seen um, Shelley Whiteley pop up. Hey, Shelley, so it's hi, Nova and David. Nice Hello. to have you back, Shelley. Okay. Um, David and I, we had a bit of a chat earlier on and we thought we would have a, a bit of a talk about something that we, I guess we both get asked in, in our practices um, from, from you lovely people, which is how do we know if they're a narcissist? Uh, and, you know, to that, I, I guess I say, well, you know, why wouldn't you ask this question? Why wouldn't they ask? You know, how do I definitively know this person is a narcissist? Because if they're not a narcissist, 
I don't want to just get rid of them because, you know, they might be, you know, I, I might be doing something wrong or, you know, they might be fixable or, you know, I, I don't want to kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater and get rid of them unless I definitively know if they're a narcissist. And I guess the reason we wanted to talk about this, guys, is because you will never know. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of crazy for me to say that because, you know, this whole program is about narcissistic abuse. But what I mean by that uh, is that, uh, as you guys know, a narcissist does not get diagnosed, do they, David? There is no, um, there's no blood test <laughs> that you can do to say, oh, yeah, that, that, that person's a narcissist. There, um, there's no hope of them going to counselling for their narcissism. You know, can you imagine them walking into a therapist's office and, and going, hey, you know what? I've got narcissism. Can you cure me? Um, this just... <laughs> It's just not on the cards. Uh, so the only thing, reason a, uh, a true narcissist will go is certainly not for their narcissism, but for, I guess, if they've been told to go, if it's been court ordered or if they're trying to manipulate someone. They want to manipulate the, the therapist and, and, I guess, use them to further abuse their partner. Uh, but, yeah, that you, you will never, they will never, ever get that definitive proof that their partner is, an, is a narcissist. So I guess what David and I kind of wanted to reinforce tonight was um, to trust in your gut instinct, which means you have been, uh, you have been gaslighted, you have been manipulated, you have been conditioned, you have been brainwashed by the very person that you are potentially giving the benefit of the doubt to. Um, so I, I guess if you if you think about it, um, they've taught you not to trust your gut instinct, okay? So you come out of these relationships and that doesn't change. You still, you know, um, don't trust your gut instinct and you question everything that you think that comes out of your mouth. So um, naturally it would, it would cross your mind being, you know, a, a person who doesn't think they know everything and that they're superior to everyone else like an actual narcissist does. Uh, well, you know, am I right? Uh, are they a narcissist? So what, what we want to do tonight is to get you to think about the fact that you've done all this reading, you've done all the research and you have had this light bulb moment um, based on case study after case study after case study after talking to other abuse victims. Um, and, and what we want you to do is now finally trust your gut instinct. Um, and if, if, you know, at the very least, um, stop looking so much at the label and start looking at their behaviour. If they're, bad, you know, if they're doing all, all these things things that kind of fit in with what you've researched about narcissism and NPD, then they, they're going to fit somewhere along that narcissistic spectrum. So that's what I want you to trust in and look at the behaviour rather than the label. So, yeah, that's what we thought we'd have a bit of a, a chat tonight about, um, didn't we, David, just to, yeah, get, get the, I guess, the pressure off people to, to get a, a, a definitive diagnosis. Yeah, it's 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 too hard to do that, I think, in the end. And it's not what's important. But to go back to it, it's, you know, like psychopaths, take it up to antisocial. True, true experts say that you don't know what, who a psychopath is unless they tell you. So it's too hard to do this. Um, and, and it's not important. Well, in, in the self-doubt, I've done, I've tried to do this with people, come to conclusions like this. Are they or are they not? And it won't matter because the victim will still doubt, still doubt, still doubt. Uh, ne tomorrow, next week, it's, it's, they'll just, are you sure you think so? Or I'm not sure. And so it's really what's going on inside, right? Inside, inside ourselves. And, and, you know, who knows how long we've been minimizing abuse and accepting it, trying to not feel it, ignore the, the pain, the hurt, minimize it, excuse it. Um, you know, hold on to hope, right? Hold on to hope that things are going to change. They're going to be that ideal person we thought, and, and, you know. And so what, you know, I think that's why it's so important to to go through this process with another person. Extremely important, especially someone outside of the relationship, somebody not involved, somebody with a, a, a different perspective and a healthy one. Um, 
I just want to read the uh, definition of abuse. I've done this before, and, and I've just I found another from Gale Encyclopedia of Medicine. They've they've narrowed it down to very short and sweet. Abuse is defined as any action that intentionally harms or injures another person. That's it. That's it. If you intentionally hurt somebody, then you're abusing somebody. So we don't need to say, are they narcissists, are they not? And I'm glad you brought up that it's a spectrum. So we're all on that spectrum somewhere. Very difficult to know who is the na the narcissist, right? Where, you know, um, like you said, they don't, they aren't getting diagnosed. They don't want to. They aren't, in, they aren't going seeking a, a therapeutic advice on how to fix and change themselves in their lives. They aren't doing that. They aren't looking for the answer. So very confusing. And I think we need to direct our and focus on our attention on how we feel, how it's made us feel, how they hurt us, and, and realize that, that it's just wrong and just draw the line right there, a line that we haven't had in the, in the ground for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess just, I guess, to um, expand on, on, on what you just said, uh, just just the fact that people uh, are questioning, you know, wh whether they're, they're a narcissist, it's, it, it is. It's like they are looking for an excuse to, to stay. Um, and, and that, I guess, we have to ask why. Why are you not, why are you not just going, that, that is so bad, no matter what, no matter what they've got, you know, whether, <laughs> no matter what, what they have come down with or they're diagnosed with or if they've got a personality disorder or whatever it is, um, they are, they're abusing me and this relationship is toxic and it's destroying me. So I guess um, we should really ask ourselves why are we um, looking for reasons to not leave this abusive relationship? And that's kind of what it's like when we say, you know, are they a narcissist? I don't want to, you know, I, I need to know this and it, why you know if they're still going to be a narcissist or still they're still going to be whoever they are if you stay they're still going to be engaging in that you know abusing you um so yeah i think it's really important to ask to ask yourself why why it's so important for you to know that um i know that it gives you in one sense you you want a label and i you know, we totally get that. And you want the label because it justifies that you're not crazy. It's like, oh, my goodness, you know, I've had that light bulb moment. I now know that I'm not crazy. So in one sense, you the having the label is a really, really good thing because it gives you a sense of um, justice, I guess, in, in knowing that um, you were right all along and you weren't crazy. But I guess if you're still really struggling to believe you know, if you if you've come up with the that label because you've done all your research and then you're still, you know, struggling to 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 believe it, then I think that's when you're relying too much on the label because there's underlying issues with um with not being able to leave yet and wanting an excuse to stay. Absolutely, yeah, holding on to hope. Yeah. That's yeah, it. which needs to be killed. It needs to be squashed. It needs to die. Yeah, and, and we keep hope alive, right? I mean, what is ruminating, right? I think ruminating is is, and this is partly ruminating a little bit, right? I mean, it's 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 having anxiety about things we don't have control of. So what can we do? We sit and we think, and we we just keep thinking and thinking and thinking about it, thinking that it's calming our anxieties that we have some control over this now, you know, yeah. instead of throwing this whole thing away like you said the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. we want to save that hope yeah and and uh you know hope hope that there's some good right that they, they can change that this can stop this can go back to the way it was in the beginning yeah and i, I think that cognitive distance has got a lot lot to do with you know trying to um you know, minimize the abuse and 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 hope that maybe they're not a narcissist. But and with the cognitive dissonance, we we do we 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 minimize the abuse. We try and make it uh, not as bad, seem not as bad as it really was. Um, come up with all these these reasons and justifications. How you know? Oh well, you know they did something nice this day, and and that didn't seem very narcissistic to me and we cling on to all these reasons why they they mightn't be 
a narcissist and we we you know throw all the other things out uh, that you know are, are really definitive proof which is just the the total lack of conscience um no empathy um with regard to your feelings and you know, just destroying your life yeah sure and and so let's vote we've been focusing on bad and abuse and that, you know, that's how we know they're a narcissist i think it's really important something that i like to do with clients is is you know because people you know do you think you love them so i want i make my clients tell me everything they love about them and then I make them tell me everything that their that their abuser loves about them, because then they want they think well they must love me or they love me. What did they love about me? Were they in love with me? Did they love me? Do they now? So write it down. What what did they love about you? What did they tell you? You know. And with narcissists, it's going to be nothing but physical, feeling, sex, money, fame, entertainment, you know, things like this. It won't be genuine emotional. Uh, who you are so and then another thing i like to ask is you know what what kind of values and morals do you have what's important to you and i find out what's important to them and then i say what do you think it's is important to your ex what kind of values and morals do they have and they're always they none 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 so here we are two totally different people right yeah. so it, are they a narcissist are they not does that matter anymore does it yeah doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, they're abusing you. They're totally different people, totally different person than you, different morals, different values, or they just don't have any. They hold things important that you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess what 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 is important is to um, is, is to trust, you know, start to learn to trust your gut instinct isn't it? Um, and we get, we get taught not to, yeah, that, that little voice inside us that's saying, this is just not right. There's something off here um, that we squash and we get taught, we get conditioned to squash it. You know, when we're, when we're with the narcissist, we have to learn to, you know, to heed that voice and, and take note of it and let it guide us. Yeah. This is all about self-worth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Boundaries yeah. will show you. They, they're a measure of self-worth. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we might um, start answering some questions, David. If you've got some comments about um, about what David and I have been talking about, uh, yeah, just comment below. Say where you're from. Say hi. Whereabouts in the world you're tuning in from. And, yeah, and David and I would love to answer your to answer everyone's but um as always a great excuse to come back next week what's happened to david he's disappeared okay anyway we'll wait for david to come back and who else have we got here tonight um we've got karen connors is there hey karen thank you for joining us we've got matthew harrison there hey matthew uh vera bako is there hey vera Vera says, hi, Nova and David. I found a newspaper ad about NPD many years ago and it all made sense to me. It still took me some years before I left the marriage. Yeah, and that's, I certainly hope that you're not beating yourself up about the fact that it, it, it took you, you know, that long to leave. Uh, you know, sometimes I've heard of people staying in, you know, marriages 20, 30 years before they they really have that that light bulb moment it's it's only you, you can't you can't beat yourself up because you're when you're in when you're being narcissistically abused you're in the fog okay just because you you read a little article about npd doesn't mean that you've got that that was your defining moment that said hey you know i'm being abused by a narcissist here i need to get out um and and you know it, it's hard to tell when you will have that defining moment, but you will know when when you do. Uh, and, you know, sometimes this doesn't happen for a long time because you just haven't been told. You don't know what you don't know. And the insidious nature of narcissistic abuse, um, Vera, renders victims powerless. You, you don't know uh, what's happening to you because it is so sly and so subtle. 
and you end up thinking, you know, that this is this is just the way it is, and this, and you know, you're that somehow you deserved what you're going through. So, um, yeah, it, it took you some years to leave the marriage. I'm just, I thank goodness that that you did, and that you did have that that defining light bulb moment. So, um, yeah, lovely to have you here, Vera. Okay, I uh, don't know what's happened to David, but um, I'm sure he'll be back. So when I see him, oh, so he's watching. Add him again. It's a pretty David. I, it just threw me off. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Something's going on with Facebook. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, it did that to us a couple of weeks ago, didn't it? It threw you off. Strange. No, it's never done this before. No. Oh, really? Okay, well, hopefully it doesn't do it again. Yeah. Uh, Jules says, uh, hey, Jules. Jules says, how do you deal with a narc in the workplace as you can't go no contact there? David? Well, God, you know, I've given so many different things of advice on this. A lot, I really have. I've given, I've made videos and videos about this, answered many questions, but I, I guess attitude is one thing, right? What kind of attitude are you going to have? And, and I tell people, anytime you got to deal with anybody, we should know what we want, right? Be really clear on that. So I go to work to make money, not friends, and I like to keep them separated just like our brains do. We got a part that 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 controls work and we got a part of our brain over here that controls friendships and relationships emotional part of our life and i like to keep that very clear and separate and i try not to make too many friends or any at work right and i try not to deal with money with friends so very <laughs> very separate right so that when i deal with you know if there's somebody i don't like at work well you got to deal with them don't you because one of the only really things you can do is just go get another job and I'm telling you, that's not the answer because you're just going to you're going to go to another job with another narcissist, maybe. You know, right. Um, and and I don't I don't, I, I don't uh, disagree with leaving. I think that's always the best thing to do. Just leave. Right. We're not running away. But when it comes to work, we can't just keep getting new jobs. Right. That's not the answer. So we just don't get too close to people at work. We don't share too much. We don't we don't listen too much. We don't tell things too much we don't have too much emotion and i've given a huge list of things uh that we can do from you know just gray rocking techniques to ignoring them to you know i literally there's lots of things you can do you you, you can never look at them keep your back to them you know never really answer their questions kind of and it's not ignoring it's just making them repeat themselves you know a few times when they ask you a question and never really answering it but there's there's things you can do and 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 being victims of narcissists those are things that we aren't used to doing <laughs> we're, we're used to being very helpful and very efficient and giving people more than what they asked for and more than what they need and yeah. and and yeah that's where narcissists uh affect us at work and don't bother too many other people that way but you know it's just it, it's a part of life and i'm telling you when we if all of our life is work this is where the problem really comes into play like you're you're really going to have troubles with narcissists at work if that's all you do if you've got a good social life and friendships and stuff like that it won't bother you as much i promise yeah and if you really want to go work for yourself yeah yeah. yeah, so I hope that's helped, Jules. But yeah, as best you can, um, grey rock. But basically, don't reward them. You know, when when they're they're, they're baiting you, um, and I guess yeah, just learn to learn to grey rock them and um, just not not react as with any narcissist. Try not reacting to their provocation, and of of course they're going to be doing that. Yeah, and I mean, if if a, if someone a coworker is breaking rules, that's bothering you. You know, we don't need to tell about everything, but if it's affecting you, if someone's affecting you, bothering you, you can't make it stop, and it's breaking company rules and violating stuff like this, tell your boss. Otherwise, I wouldn't say anything. Be careful what you tell your boss. You don't want to. 
soon enough, we end up becoming a problem to our boss if we keep saying things all the time. That's kind of how it works. Just, just kind of a piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. Bullying is certainly not acceptable on any level. And if that's what's going on, there's bullying going on there, that's, that's illegal. Um, and certainly something needs to be done about that. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess you, you have to live with, not live with, but work with this person, what, eight hours a day. Um, so you have to work out some strategies around things coexisting with them, you know, and being able to get your job done without, um, I guess, breaking down. That's right. Just, just keep, always keep focused on what you want. And that's that, mm -hmm. that's your job and your paycheck, you know? Yeah. And, 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 yeah. Really, it's not fighting back. It, and some people think sticking up for yourself or standing up for yourself means fighting back or hurting them back or winning. And it's yeah. it, it's as simple as just being nice and saying, please stop. You know, if they don't do that, then there's a problem, you know, but let's yeah. try that first. Yeah, exactly. I guess we, we've just got to remember the narcissist is always after drama. And that doesn't change if it's the workplace or at home. They are always after drama. So, you know, perhaps you'll be giving, if you do nothing, that's probably, or, you know, say nothing. If, if it, of course, it's not, you know, overt or even covert bullying, um, then you're not giving them what they want because they're, half the time what they're provoking you is to get a reaction because they want drama. So just remember what they're trying to get out of you with their actions. Right. Okay. Uh, Carolyn Mobsby's there. Hey, Carolyn. Carolyn says, my ex snark is in jail, but I've been attacked by flying monkeys. What is the best way to deal with the flying monkeys? Yeah. Uh, Carolyn, it's really hard to know exactly what's going on with that little bit of information and, and exactly, you know, what, what context, context, context you're dealing with the flying monkeys. But certainly uh, I wouldn't be having anything to do with them. Um, if they're, you know, if, if you're labelling them flying monkeys, then they're associates of the narcissist who's in jail. Um, anything you tell them uh, will get back to, to him, um, which clearly I'm assuming you wouldn't want. So I would be having nothing, nothing, nothing at all to do with them and just, yeah, yeah completely well, no contact with them as well. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to do something? I mean, yeah. to make it stop, to make harassment stop. That that you know, go take the legal route. If if we're talking about harassment, which is unwanted attention, constantly, yeah, go the legal route. Yeah, absolutely. If it's if they're stalking you, if they're harassing you, uh, then yes, yeah, certainly contact the authorities because you can't live your life that with someone. Um, you know, um, into, trying to intimidate you and, and just not leaving you alone when you're asking them to leave you alone. Yeah. Okay. We've got... We've got NAC there. Hey, NAC. Maxine Green is there. Says hi from the Gold Coast. Hey, Maxine. Uh, we've got Karen Edwards is there. Hey, Karen. Uh who else have we got? We've got Fatima, Fatima Begum there. Hey, Fatima. And Bella Moore is there. Hey, Bell. Um, okay, Maxine says, my ex is trying real hard to hurt me again. Saying stuff about some girl he likes. Why is he still wanting to hurt me? Oh, Maxine, I'm so sorry you're going through this. I guess we would probably ask you why, why is he getting through to you? Um, you know, why does he still have that contact with you with where you're able to, uh, where, where he's got the capacity to hurt you? Um, David? Yeah, yeah. And why are you hearing this or how are you? So we cut that off. That's a part of your responsibility that you have. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not blaming you. I'm sure that there, there, there's all kinds. I mean, maybe he's flying it over a plane, you know, and a message on a plane behind him. I don't know. But text message, we, you know, when I try to get my clients to quit their ex, you know, I, I tell them, how serious are you? You let me know. If you're 100% serious, then I can be extreme. If you're only 50%, if you're only halfway in, then we can just do a little bit, <laughs> you know? So we want to be extreme, we throw our phone in the river. 
we can we can change our phone number and i get people that say oh i can't change my phone number that's that's difficult yeah so is this so is this right yeah. i mean people are asking me or or paying me lots of money or whatever they're trying to do to get this to stop but they don't want to change their phone number they don't want to <laughs> shut off facebook they don't oh, want to get rid of facebook messenger huh yeah, or the email. That that's the one that I hear. Um, like I hear, uh, you know, I, I can't get rid of that email because everyone's got that email. And then you know, you kind of say, well, you need to weigh up your emotional, your psychological health. Yeah, I know it's a pain. I would hate to have to try and change my email and think of everyone that I I would have to notify. But I guess right. these are the things that you've got to weigh up. This is your life. This is it has to be your number one commitment. Um. And, and yeah, we sometimes it, it it takes extreme measures to get rid of extreme toxic people, um, and have, that's not your problem. We have shame and guilt because of our choices we've made, been making with these people. And the one way you can regain that shame and and raise your self worth is by choices, by making choices for yourself and big ones, good ones. You know, I'm going to go this extreme. I'm going to I'm going to do this for myself because I'm worth it. Yeah. 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 Commit exactly. and invest. Commit and invest. Yeah. Yeah. So too, too long you've been, um, Maxine, you've been you've been basing your self worth on the opinions of a psychopath. You know, and, and that's what we do. That that's the way we've been conditioned. We we judge ourselves based on what they're doing, what they think about us. And that's, I'm not victim blaming here. I'm saying this is the residual effect of trauma. This is, you know, you've been, you've been conditioned to think that you, you know, you're not worth anything, that you're, you're only, you're, your worth is dependent on whether they give, give you a good review, basically, your abuser. Um, and that's not your fault. But as David said, it's going to be your responsibility to kick them to the curb. And um, sometimes it does take extreme measures to do that. So, yeah, if, if you're if you're if he's able to get this information through to you, and believe me, he will be trying. Uh, it's no coincidence. It's never a coincidence with a narcissist. They want you to know about what they're doing so that it renders you insecure, um, and you know that self worth stays just where they want it to stay. So. Um, yeah, he's not going to stop wanting to hurt you. He doesn't want you to heal. They never do. Well, he wants you to still be um, pining for him. You need to prove him wrong. You need to prove to him um, that you're worth a hell of a lot more than that. Yeah. hope that's helped, Maxine. Uh, okay, we've got Karen Edwards there. Uh, Karen says, uh, how do you tell kids? Um I'm assuming, David, that Karen's probably meaning how do you tell them about the, I'm not, I can't guarantee, but potentially that their, their parent is a narcissist. Um, you know, how, how do you deal with that? Um, what would you, what, what do you say to that? That's my guess too. Yeah. I think that's what they are referring to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's say that's the question. How do you tell your mutual your shared children that their father or their mother is a narcissist i think so how do you tell them i you know obviously we say they're a narcissist right so i i when is, is age appropriate right it's up to you and and we do it with kindness compassion and love yeah yeah. yeah, because this is their parent and we can't, we don't need to hurt them. We don't need to abuse them. Remember abuse. We don't need to intentionally hurt anybody here. This isn't a chance to, for revenge. This, this is to help your children understand what's going on. Because if your children are being hurt by their parent being abused, then the child believes it's their fault if they don't understand it. So we're helping them understand it and we're going to help them. The reason is to help them deal with the parent, how to react to them, how to, how to, how, what to do, how to deal with this parent. Cause quite often, right? It's shared. You gotta, they're going to be with them too. 
They're going to be abused by them or neglected by them, maybe, right? Inappropriate things. So a real right or wrong. And we let the children know that, you know, where their boundaries are. You know, we might have to tell the children what's right or wrong for them. And this isn't right. And this, and this is wrong. And, you know, don't let people do this to you. Don't let them say this to you. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if you're okay, and this is why it's so important to do your self-care work, if you're okay, Karen, um, and, and, and you're healing and moving on and beca- becoming that, that strong, happy mother, I keep, or, you know, or father, I keep stress, stressing this, or David and I both stress this, that the, the kids don't want a perfect mother or father. They want a happy mother or father so if you're okay and you're 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 getting through this and you're healing and you're learning to be happy again um the kids are going to be okay but they're looking to you for that happiness okay so i guess that's where you have to role model um you know how to be how to be happy again now that you're you're out of that toxic war zone and as you know, David said, of course, talking to them at an age-appropriate level um, with kindness and, and compassion, because yeah, it, that's 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 their parent, and um, you know, uh, a, a child never stops loving the other parent. Um, you know, when they're they're going through all this stuff, uh, what they do, David, is they they stop loving themselves, don't they? So you know, if if we tell them things like you know, oh, you. Your, your dad or your mum doesn't love you, you know, that that real parental alienation stuff, which is just, oh, my goodness, don't get me started. Um, you know, if we tell them, well, hey, your parent doesn't really love you, um, the, the child is not going to stop loving their parent, but they certainly will stop loving themselves. So that's what we do. Um, so it's very important to do it in a, a very compassionate way. Yeah, yeah good point. They will withdraw. They'll, they'll, there'll be more space between you and the children if you uh, if you do that. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Okay. Um, okay. Nay, Cece, there is there. Hey, Nay. Nay says, how do I deal with a child who has regressed after the narc discard? Oh my goodness. Um, they were sleeping. He was sleeping in his room, but now clinging to me, even scared to be in any room of the house by himself. Oh, wow, that's really awful. Nay, uh, I strongly suggest getting him into some counselling. Um, this is really, really typical. Uh, you know, even when there's there's not a narcissistic parent, divorce is a horrendous upheaval of a child's life. I mean, you know, they they essentially lose their life as they know it. Like you you look at it, if you think about it through the eyes of a little girl or a little boy, even if there's not a narcissistic parent, one parent moves into, you know, this house and they move into another house. They potentially lose friends from the neighbourhood. They might have to leave toys behind. They might have to leave their pet, you know, go 50-50 with their pet. They're, um, you know, they're, 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 they possibly think they're responsible and, and most children do think that they're somehow responsible for their parents splitting up. Uh, you know, they, they, there is such incredible loss for a child of divorce when this happens um, and they, they, they have this ability to blame themselves. So even if there wasn't that, that kind of abuse, that psychological abuse going on, there I would suggest getting them into counselling. And these behaviours, like you can imagine, um, you know, he's, he's lost one parent, you know, what, you, he's just living in a house now with, with one of his parents, so he would be scared probably he's going to lose you. You know, he, he's lost one parent, um, I guess, from living there full time, and, you know, there's that that underlying fear of loss and that he's going to lose more and and that he doesn't want to lose you too. So he's clinging on to you. Um, And this is fear, anxiety, all that stuff coming up and is is really traumatic for a child. So I strongly urge you to get him into some counselling to to deal with that. But um, unfortunately, it's really, really common um, for children to go through sort of that kind of um, um, anxiety with um, when, when two parents split up. 
Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So much, so unstable, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just the, the loss, you know, just that they experience just so much loss. And I don't think we as adults, you know, co- quite understand what the children go through, the grief they go through with experience such major, major loss as what they do with when two parents split up. And, and children can't understand that. No, they can't process it. You know, so that's why, um, you know, you might see behavioural issues, um, clinginess, um, uh, acting out, you know, becoming naughty. Um, a lot of kids, you know, start wetting the bed again and regressing in, in that kind of way. Uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways they can let you know that, um, that, they're, that they're having a lot of trouble, um, but they're not going to come out and say, Mum, I'm experiencing all of this stuff going on and I'm just not coping with the divorce. They're not got the, you're not going to get the words out of them. What you're going to get is the irregular, the, well, the abnormal behaviour. That's how you, you tell that, that a child is struggling. So, yeah, lots and lots of counselling, um, Nacy, and just, yeah, mum's love. Let, let, her know you're not go- let him know you're not going anywhere. He's not going to lose you too. And um, he, um, he's cra- he would be craving security, okay? He's, he's experienced a great deal of loss and he's really needing a sense of stability and security. Yeah, big time. Stability eliminates stress out of his life, their lives, children's. Yeah, and less emotion. Less emotion, more stability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, we got Lee Michelle there. Hey, Lee. Uh, and we've got Lula Katsu Akapas is there. Hey, Lula. Okay, Lula says, let me just open Lula's up. Lula says, oh, it's a long one. Um, I'm over my ex with his manipulation and intimidation. He keeps making my life miserable, even though he has an IVO from the police. Um, he, oh, he's got an IVO. I'm assuming um, you've got the IVO on him. Um, anyway, I, only two hours ago, I went to meet my friend for a coffee. He was there already. As soon as I walked in, he was already filming my every move right in front of me. Oh, my goodness, he's got the video camera out. <sighs> I walked up to him and asked him to stop, but he just kept doing it. I warned him I'd call the police and he just shrugged his shoulders like, I don't care. I went to the police about this constant behaviour and they can't do nothing about it because he's in a public place. And as long as he's five metres away, he has every right to intimidate me in that way. My nerves are shot. I feel even though I'm the victim, I'm being victimised. He's taken over my life, my friends, and I keep finding that I have to be hiding and running away from him. What can I do? It's a small community and there's only so many places I can go to have peace without bumping into him and going through this anxiety and stress. I'm going to let you tackle that one, David, but <laughs> stalking. Yeah, that's horrible. Standing on the boundary of the, you know, the the limitations of the restraining order, and say, basically going, yeah, no, 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 you know, I haven't stepped over the line. I mean, that it's illegal. It's just disgusting. I'm so sorry going through that. Yeah, that's awful. I, I, I would. It sounds like you need to fight, or leave, leave this community, or fight. If this isn't going to stop what you've done already. Um, maybe pursue a uh, civil, if that's what you, civil court, if that's what you call it there in Australia. We have criminal, and that's where you have your order from, right? But then you have civil where you could sue him for damages. So I would document every single thing he does, uh, date and time stamp. But, but what's, I tell everybody what's important is how it feels, how it feels. Yep. And you can have people around you document how it makes them feel. Because here in America, you can... <clears throat> like if someone's abusing me or like say a smear campaign, that kind of stuff, it also affects people around them and they can sue too. Yeah. So yeah, families of narcissistic smear campaign victims can sue. But so you have your family tell and write down how it makes them feel or people around you. 
and start documenting all this stuff and go see um, a, a lawman, law person, and and see if, about suing them possibly. Just just a something to throw out there, a way to fight back. Because it seems like you know we wait to see if it eventually stops, right? And then we fight back or we we leave leave that small community you're in. I have yeah. no other suggestions unless you can just wait it out and hopefully it stops. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of victims, David, uh, they hold on to the fact with that, you know, well, wh why should I leave my hometown? You know, th that's not fair. He's the one that's, you know, um, that that's abusing me. And, um, yeah, I, I agree. That's why I think, yeah, go, go and get some legal advice. I mean, that's just, it's despicable. You know, you've got a, a DVO or I think you call it an IVO in place and, and it's kind of, it sounds like he's staying on the boundary of it. You know, that's, it's just. And, it's, and, it's, and police, or a, a police officer like this isn't always the best person to ask for advice yeah. in situations like this. I know that they are supposed to know the law and stuff and they've maybe seen this a bunch of times, but go to a lawyer is i can't remember is that what you call them in australia or a lawyer. barrister lawyer yeah, lawyer. yeah. yeah. and and um, as david said document 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 i mean get yeah if this happens again get one of your friends out to film him filming you <laughs> you know just get some proof get some get some evidence around what he's doing and short of that if the law will not protect you you must remain safe um and I guess this is where it's not fair. It is not fair. But you know, you rather I would rather you be alive, and and have had to have, you know, let leave your community than you know be dead. You know, um, and potentially or potentially you know severely injured, um, having stayed because. Uh, you, you shouldn't have to leave. So, yeah, it, it's all about staying safe. Um, but, yeah, that, that behaviour is just despicable and I would certainly be getting some legal advice around it. Yeah, yeah pe people, I, I'm glad you brought that up. And we aren't running away if, if we were to leave town or, or um, you know, there's all kinds of different forms of, of protecting ourselves, of being responsible. And so... You can't control or change them. You're not responsible for what they do, but you are responsible for yourself. And if there's a way to stop this, then I then you must take that way. Yeah. You have to. I, I tell people all the time that this person's never allowed to abuse you again, ever again. Not one more time is okay. Yeah. Not at all. So, so what are you going to do? You're going to fight back? You're going to show up at a bar and yell at them and talk to them? Don't do that. This is serious, and you have to tell the police right away. You said you kept going up to them and saying stuff and fighting back. You can't do this. You know, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a hard one, but you've got to remember that they're provoking you uh, and they want a reaction from you. They, they know the, the law that they're, they're basically, you know, give it flipping the bird at the, at the law, you know, they're giving them the, the, you know, the, the happy finger, you know, and because nothing, no one's doing anything. So you have to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Gemma's replying to Vera. Gemma says he's trying, he's just trying to get to you. Mine does the same. Pay no mind. I always get half, I always get a half, decent mother wouldn't do that yeah um yeah and, and that's so common common um Gemma uh they always attack your motherhood or your fatherhood and the reason they do that is because that's who you identify as that's that's the most important thing in the world to you so narcissists will attack what's most important to you and there's it, it's a horrible feeling to have someone call you a bad mother or a bad father because you love your children so much. Um, so, yeah, just remember that when they say that, they're really just projecting because that's who they are. They're the, the terrible parent. Uh, but it's just to provoke you and bait you, to get you to defend your motherhood. So just 
let it be water off a duck's back and don't give them what they want, which is a reaction. That's right. That's right. Okay, we've got Lee. Michelle says, um, I literally changed my phone number four days ago. It took a long time to let everybody know my new number, but, oh, what a relief it is not to get a call or text, even though I blocked his number, he'd use other people's phones. Yeah, and there's there's a classic example um, of, isn't it, David, of, of what we have to do sometimes to stay safe and to be able to move on and heal. Yeah, I'm glad, Michelle, that you believe that you're worth that much. I wish yeah. other people would believe that too. Yeah. 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 Good on you, Lee. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for telling us. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Hopefully that'll inspire a lot of other people, Lee, that, um, that these are some of the measures we have to take. And is it fair? No, it is not fair. It's 100% not fair. But you've got to weigh up, um, you know, what you have to do to be able to move on and heal. Um, and these are, you know, some of the things that's, that, you know, the fallout of having been in a relationship with a narcissist. Yeah. The repercussions of some of these yeah. things. Uh, we've got Jin Jane there. Hey, Jin. Uh, Jin says, why do the narcs enablers continue the, the narcs attacks on you with the victim blame? I had so-called mutual friends pass on information from the narcs Facebook post of them putting me down and making fun of me with false information. How do I heal from the ongoing trauma because of the, enabl of, because of the enablers? David? Well, I think it's time after we realize we we have been dating a disordered person who's been abusing us for however time. Uh, I think it's important to evaluate all of our relationships with every single person we have a relationship with everybody, every relationship from our mother to our friends, you know, I, I, because we need to. You know, if, if we just, it, you know, if our excuse or our reason for not stopping abuse is we didn't know, then we may not know a lot more. We may not know much about other relationships we have, and we need to evaluate them. And that is, you know, <clears throat> what is it worth to me? What are these? What are these relationships worth to me to keep? Are they important to me? Do I want to? Are, are these are these people abusing me? I just yeah. was with. I was just living with someone who was abusing me for five years. Yeah. What about my friends? And that's typically what we find. I'm telling you, you'll find that you have abusive family members that you've been putting up with for 30, 40, 50 years. We have friends we've been putting up with that have been taking advantage of us and using us and not caring about us and how we feel and minimizing everything. And, and so we evaluate our relationships and are they beneficial to us? Are they going where we, we want them to go? Um, we have emotional needs in relationships. And I would hope that your needs are being met in these relationships, at least security. You brought up security. That's like always the most important. Um, yeah. So we evaluate relationships and realize, you know, you know hey, we, <laughs> there's uh, friends of a narcissist aren't very healthy. And so I'm, I'm going to make them draw the line. And, and that's also something very hard for people to do after a relationship is, you know, I, I hate to say it, but you kind of like pick, you know, choose them or me, but, you know, you shouldn't have to really do that. You don't, sure. people, yeah, they may not be the healthiest people that you want to be friends with anyway. So that, that's just my best advice is we evaluate mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah. And I, I kind of be asking myself the question, Jen, why are these people um, letting you, you know, telling you about this stuff? You know, um, the, there's a meme I saw the other day and I thought, yeah, that's just so prolific. It said, you know, forget about, um, uh, you know, why the abuser is, is, is telling you all this stuff about me. Why is my abuser you know, telling you all this stuff about me? What I want to know is why are they so comfortable in telling you? Do you know what I mean? Like, why why is my abuser so comfortable in talking to you about you know my life and 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 this stuff that that's gone on? You've got to ask yourself that question. Why are these people caught up talking about you 
with the narcissist. That's, you know, it, it doesn't, if, I guess this kind of boils down to what David was just talking about and um, reflecting on who we call friends and um, really coming to terms with the fact that some of those people mightn't be the type of friends that you want in your life. That we have relationships that don't serve us. Yeah. To say the least. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you, yeah, I think it would be really a good thing to look at those friendships of it. Um, look at your relationship to these enablers and work out what, what do these guys bring to my life? What, how do they enhance my life? Do I need them in, the, in my life? Am I just um, kind of clinging on to this relationship because I don't want to be rude in discarding them? Well, you know what? You're allowed to terminate toxic people from your life and you do not have to give them an explanation. That's being assertive. It's not being nasty, arrogant or horrible. Yeah. yeah, once you find out who you are, better and better and better, more and more and more, have a relationship with yourself and find out what's important to you, your values, your morals, what's principle in everything you do, then you will start wanting that in other people around you because you should, but you will. And once we, you know, if we're not really sure of our principles and we're not really care about our own morals and values and the choices we make don't show this, uh, that we have any, then then we have people in our lives that, that don't either, that don't too. And you're allowed to terminate those friendships and you do not have to give them an excuse. That, that's, that's, that's not being a narcissist. That's being um, assertive and that's, be, that's saying, hey, I, I, I don't want this person in my life, um, you know, because uh, you have made that decision that they, they bring no value to your life. In fact, they probably bring a whole, lot of, a whole heap of negativity to your life. Yep, yep. I think it's, you know, yeah, I think that's a, a lot of people struggle with that. They, they think, well, well, I can't just, you know, get rid of these people because that would be mean, you know, and I don't want to be like the narcissist. Um, you, you, to be a narcissist, it takes a whole, whole lot more than, you know, being assertive and, and, and saying these are my boundaries and this is what, what I will accept and this is what I, I won't accept, you know. I'll, you guys know that there's a lot more to NPD than um, putting boundaries around who you want in your life or not. Um, so yeah, don't don't think that it's you know that you're you're suddenly all a narcissist because you are terminating toxic relationship. Yeah. Or you yeah. know it doesn't matter if someone else considers it not to be toxic. You consider it to be toxic. You're allowed to terminate that relationship. Yeah, it's about how you feel, not them. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, oh, this is one you might be able to help with, um, David. Uh, we've got Jennifer Flores is there. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer says, I have a business that's public. How can I run my business without him getting in contact with me? It's a hard one, isn't it? Well, then I, I, I mean, you'd have to take the legal route again, right? We're going to have to. And, and when I say document things, um, I know most people at the time feel like I don't need to document this. I don't really care too much about this. But we're building a case, right? We're building, yeah. we, we want everything, right? Nothing fake or false, but we want everything, everything. So yeah, this is, these are legal issues that you take up in, in your courthouse or with your lawyer. Okay, we have civil and, and we have criminal, and if they're if they're harassing you, that's criminal, and you can sue for damages. But we we know we contact lawyers for stuff like this; they'll help you the most. Okay, they don't need to know about narcissism. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, it, 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 I guess yeah, as David said, just document everything. Uh, Jennifer, if they're you know slandering you and saying you know Jennifer Flores, you're a yeah, you've got a terrible business and you're terrible at your job. You know that they can't do that. They, you know, you can't, you can't do that. So you, you know, you really have to. If they're trying to, you know, um, bring your your um, business and your name into ill repute, and um, that affects your livelihood, that affects your living, that affects your reputation, and that filters out to every aspect of your life. 
um, they can't do that. That's illegal. Um, so, you know, if someone is doing that, then you really need to get um, some legal advice, but you have to, um, yeah, you have to have that, I guess, the keep documenting what, what they're doing because it, it always starts off small. You know, they start prodding and poking and, you know, um, you know, I'll just try and harass them a little bit. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Why? Because they're not getting a reaction from you. So they have to keep upping the ante until you just explode and with reactive abuse, you know, which, you know, happens, you know, where you get to a point where uh, you react normally to an abnormal amount of abuse. The thing is, when you react normally, that's when they're going to pounce and go, hey, see, I told you they were terrible at their business. You know, it, this is what they do. This is what they want. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye on it and um, and know your rights. Get some legal advice. That's right. Yeah, and I always have support. The, the, the worse people, the, the more that people treat us worse, the more we need people around us. I mean, the, the better we need or, or the more we need better friendships and relationships, it really helps us with this. And like I said, it, it don't make work your whole life. Don't. Yeah, it's going to stress you out more. Part of it is just to accept some of this, right? I mean, people can give their opinion about your business. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. You know, a lot of this has to roll off, roll off your back. We need to start learning how to do that, too. If you want to be in public or have public businesses, stuff like this, right? But, but take the legal route and, and don't make your whole life your job, okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, we've got Chelsea Henderson is there. Hey, Chelsea, let me just open up your question. Oh, it's actually replying to Karen Edwards. Chelsea says, you don't want to rip each other apart over things in the past or with each other in front of the kids. You have to step forward and make it about the kids, like pick up and drop up, but don't get involved with what happens in each other's houses uh, because kids uh, can play the game to laugh out loud. Yeah, just um, yeah, so, some good advice in respect to um, not, not involving the kids and um, yeah, no, no reactions, no interacting with the other parent, um, you know, and, and just keep it, keep it minimal contact, grey rock when there's, there's that much, uh, when the other, the other party, the other parents try, is, you know, trying to be trying to gaslight you or provoke you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mark Silverwood say, Hey Mark, Mark says, if you could prove that these people were disordered with a blood test, wouldn't that be good? Uh, the flying monkeys would worship them. All insecure people could keep up the good work, guys. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Wouldn't that just be the bomb? So I'm not going out with you until you go get your blood taken. <laughs> yeah, I, I promise it's more about us. Or, or at least it's all we can control is us. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. the healthier we get, the, the more we can identify unhealthy behaviour. Yeah, our health, our self worth, uh, our opinion of ourself is is our kryptonite, you know, um, to use. So yeah, that's 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 why they need to bring to wear you down. So you can't you can't fight you can't fight back. You just have you don't have the strength anymore. Okay, uh, did, did it, we've got Laurie McDonald there. Uh, says hi from California. Hey, Laurie, thank you for joining us all the way from California. Uh, did, 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 we've got Carol Ann Ashley is there from Adelaide. Hey, Carol Ann. Um, I have people up with me at the same time, same time zone, all right. Exactly. Uh, a few um, bags under the ice tonight. <laughs> Uh, we've got Lizzie James is there. Hey, Lizzie. Lizzie says, yes, that's what they are looking for. The reaction, like you said, said still being in control. Yeah. They always want your reactions, Lizzie. Well, they're looking for their self-worth too, aren't they? I mean, narcissism is the lowest self-esteem you can get. So yeah. they poke and prod you to see what their worth is too. And when you ignore them, it kills them. Just kills them. And that's why they keep trying and trying and trying. Yeah, absolutely. You you ignore them, and they will just they will 
you know, go to your your friends, your boss. They will they will they will turn to anyone. Um, they will just keep upping the ante and upping the ante until hopefully one day they just drop off. Um, you know, unless they're a real psychopath. Uh, but you know, it just don't react. It's what they want. They want you to feed their disorder they want you to sustain that false mask for them and you do that through your reactions you give them nothing and they go crazy yeah. that's right yeah you can almost, you can almost see them foaming or picture them foaming at the mouth because they're like what can i do they're not reacting to me i have to think of something else and um this this is the level they, they, they will stoop to just incredible levels to get a reaction from you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Cause they can't build their own self-worth up themselves. They, they cannot build their esteem themselves. They are dependent on other people completely. Hmm. Okay, we've got uh, Lynette Sawsdale there. Hey, Lynette. Lynette says, um, the legal process is BS. It cost me $70,000 and I've still lost. They all think he is the victim. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry, Lynette. And we, we hear about this all the time, the financial abuse that, that goes hand in hand with, with narcissistic abuse, don't we, David? Mm -hmm. yeah, and and the validation from the legal. From the legal system absolutely yeah i'm very sorry for your experience that's awful mm. yeah we hear that a lot um yeah i mean I, I don't know if she's talking about financial abuse and exploitation but that's that's almost in every single abusive relationship any kind of abuse it's always financial and yeah, so correct. yeah i'm sorry i don't know how you lost all that money i think she said in court fees court costs that's yeah. amazing um, uh, it cost it cost Lynette seventy thousand um, dollars. So it sounds like that was for the yeah for the uh, I'm assuming the court process. And um, she still lost. And um, they believed in the end that that he was the victim. And this is where yeah it's it's incredibly hard um, when when you go through the the court process and and you know having the legal a legal system to back you up and who understands narcissistic abuse. It is a very, very difficult process. Yes, it can be. But I wouldn't let it stop you from trying. We can't just give up, especially if that's the only thing left. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Chelsea says, is narcissism genetic or a disorder? Um, well, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, a disorder. Um, did you want to talk to that one, David? Yeah. She said, is it genetic or a disorder? So it, yeah, it's a disorder. Yeah. So, so we have a personality disorder and, and yeah. the conclusion is that personality disorders are three. They're genetic culture, the way you're raised. Yeah. We look at narcissism and we know that it most of it is developmental. How you how you develop emotionally as a child into an adult is when these problems occur, mostly. Yeah. But they will say, doctors say that that they are um, also can there's there's a genetic component can be yeah. or influence. Yeah. 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 So so it's it's mostly research indicates environmental, as David said, you know, with through the role modeling and, and how they're treated. Um, but there certainly can be a genetic com component. And if you look at the fact that um, if a child has a narcissistic parent, they're getting a double whammy because they're having that. I guess they're predisposed to that genetic component but they're also having that narcissistic behaviour role model to them. So they're getting it from, you know, nature and nurture. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, ma mainly environmental and developmental, as David said. I mean, think of things like, you know, neurosis is genetic, right? Parents are highly neurotic. You may be too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, 
Lee says, um, going through legals right now, he's trying to make out I pay nothing towards anything. I have a wonderful lawyer who understands about narcs. I'm so lucky. Yeah, well, you, you're you one of the few, um, Lee, and I'm so glad that you found a supportive lawyer uh, because, um, yeah, we, I, I don't, it, it's not very often that you get someone who really implicitly understands it. So that's, um, yeah, something, a bonus for you. And um, sounds like you've hit the jackpot, which is wonderful to hear. Yeah, good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Um, David, I, I think that's all I can see at the moment. So, um, yeah, we, we might wrap it up there. We're, was there anything you wanted to kind of finish off with, with, with regard to, um, you know, what we, I guess what we started talking about earlier um, with respect, to, you know, how do we know, you know that they're a narcissist? Yeah, well, I, all of this, guys, I'm telling you, is not something we do alone. You just don't. We can't process all of these things by ourselves. And, and I've seen people try, and I've seen the damages. It's damaging. We, we believe things that aren't true, and uh, it can keep us uh, very miserable, keep our self-worth down, depression, stuff like this forever. But we need, we need to really, I, I drill this into people a lot, I know, but it's so important. How can you possibly process your husband and do they have a personality disorder and I've been with them for so long and I feel horrible about myself and I'm doubting everything and th th these things, you, you can't possibly do all this now after you haven't been processing emotion and being abused and now you're supposed to do all this alone. You just can't, I'm telling you. If you do that, that just goes to show how you feel about yourself and what you believe you're worth. It's yeah. just so important. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So support system. And, and if we don't have money and stuff, we do. We must have our family and friends that care about us around us, surrounding us. If we don't have that, then we got to start working towards that. But we don't give up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You guys are top shelf. Um, you've been conditioned to think that, you belong nowhere except down with the, you know, reduced to clear sale items. Um, no, you you got to get back up there on top shelf because um, you're so worth it. And uh, that the narcissist in your life um, was wrong. They were wrong. They were dead wrong. And um, you need to start believing that. Yeah. yeah, there's just so much to processing this. Like, like I was saying earlier today about – being aware of, of how we really feel about them, you know, I, but I love them. Okay. Well, what'd you love about them? Did they love you? What's important to you? What's important to them? These are things that we do. This is, this is a part of all of this about processing everything that's happened and how it feels and what we do about it so that we understand it, feel better about it. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't do this alone guys. Period. Absolutely. Support, support, support. Yeah. Okay, well, we might leave it uh, there, David. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you uh, can, uh, David and I would love it if you would uh, share the, the live stream. Uh, you, you just don't know who, who might benefit from this. Uh, I know uh, many of you are on um, support groups, private support groups, um, that, you know, something might just resonate with, with someone. Um, so please, if you can, help us to spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. You can do that by sharing. Um, David, thank you so much for joining us, helping uh, yeah, answer everyone's questions and um, co-hosting the show with me. Love having you back, everyone. Please uh, subscribe to David's channel. It's called Demars Coaching. David puts out some incredibly helpful videos every week to help you with your narcissistic abuse recovery. So do yourself a favour and subscribe to his channel. Um, yeah. David, subscribe I to both of our subscribe to both of our channels. Everybody, subscribe to both of our channels. It, it's something that helps promote us. It helps push us or makes our work that we're doing bigger and bigger and bigger so it reaches people that need it. If you think that what we're doing benefits you or somebody else, please support it by subscribing. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Awesome. Okay, David, thank you so much. And I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks' time. Great. Thank you, everybody, for being on tonight, asking questions, listening, and supporting. Thank you all.
Good night. See you, David. Bye. 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 David joins uh, us here with the live stream um, every second Tuesday, but the live every single Tuesday night. Uh, you've always got me, um, but David is here every se every second Tuesday night. Uh, he joins us all the way from Las Vegas. So yeah, I always love having David here to um, to help with the show. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us here tonight. Once again, it was fantastic. Um, once again, apologies if we didn't get to answering your questions. Um, they, they flowed up so quickly and we just it, it's just impossible to answer them all. So please join us again next Tuesday and, and talk to each other. Just if you're watching this uh, later on, if um, when it's not live, uh, you know, you can still ask talk to each other and ask each other questions. Uh, the, all of these live streams are on uh, Brighter Outlook's timeline, so you can go back later on and watch it. Uh, you can also uh, see it on, on David's YouTube channel, which is called Demars Coaching. Um, for those of you who would like to have, who are after that extra support, uh, I am a professional counsellor in Brisbane, Australia. I, uh, it, it's it's my job, but my absolute passion to work with um, specifically victims of narcissistic abuse, victims and survivors, to help you uh, to to break away from the relationship with strategies to heal, to validate your trauma, to help you break that trauma bond, um, to and to work through, make sense of what you've been through. If you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session with me, I counsel people via Skype and telephone all over the world. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, please just inbox me here at Brighter Outlook and I would love to be able to support you in your narcissistic abuse recovery. Okay, please take care everyone. Have a wonderful week. Uh, and as always, remember your worth and then add tax. Bye, everyone.